first saw you perform at CBGB's in 76. And, oh, really? Uh, at that time, I was going to Columbia, and I thought of you as a, as a wholesome group. Uh, uh -huh. I wonder if you could tell me about that part of your image. I think a lot of people see you as wholesome. Do you see yourselves as a, <laughs> as wholesome a group? Just like funny. Um, well, I suppose we're fairly wholesome people. I mean, when you compare us to other rock and roll groups, like, I guess you could say we're more wholesome than the Rolling Stones, or more wholesome than Aerosmith. I don't know. I, we try to stay healthy, you know, but we do uh, smoke cigarettes and we do drink beer. <laughs> I don't know. Although this is, I must admit, this is the first time when we've ever had our beer poured down the drain by an armed guard. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen to us in our dressing room. But I guess, I guess Joplin has different customs than the rest of America. <laughs> Tell me something about the members of the band and their uh, duties. Their duties? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, who writes and, and mm -hmm. who plays what? Well, I, uh, of course, am the drummer. And then there's Tina Weymouth, who's the bass player. And Jerry Harrison, who plays keyboards and guitar. And David, who plays guitar and does the lead singing. And David is also our songwriter. About not, he writes about 98% of the material. Of course, the band contributes what they can in terms of arranging. And of course, there are, there are own particular parts that they play. David comes to us with an idea for a song, and we sort of help him fill in the blanks, I guess you would say. Were you all schoolmates? Uh, three of us were David and Tina and myself, or Jerry went to Harvard. And we met him uh, later on after we had been together as a trio for about a year and a half, I think, and then Jerry joined the band. Now, so far your albums have included Brian Eno as a producer. Uh -huh. And uh, you plan to stick with that? Uh, we have a, every intention of sticking with Brian, at least for the next record. But, uh, of course, these things, you never really can be sure about them until they actually happen. I mean, assuming that our schedules are compatible, I think we'll continue to work with him. Okay, and getting back to the first question I asked you about Holton, I saw, I think, Tina quoted Hit Parader, uh, that she said, talking about your image for you. I mean, there are probably a lot of debauched older people like me who come to concerts like this, but uh, do, you, do you think that, that kids do look up to you, or, uh, or would you uh, like them to, like to present well, a good image well, for them? I like to present a good image to anybody. I, I guess uh, I guess I'm more concerned about presenting a good image to older people than I am to younger people. Though you, I guess that's a leftover from my childhood or something. But um, we like to think of ourselves as as having a good influence on people in general. You know, as opposed to a uh, you know we're not particularly rowdy people, or you know we're not your average what you think of a rock and roll band as being. I wish right we could now. convince the security guards around here of that. <laughs> now, right now you're a talking head inside my viewfinder. In That's good. <laughs> but how did you come up with the name? Uh, we got it out of TV Guide magazine. And uh, we thought it was a good name because it didn't have any, it didn't really uh, imply any particular style of music the way some some bands give themselves a name which is supposed to be implied that they make real heavy music or that they're real rock and roll or they're, they're real country and of course since we weren't sure we were any of those things we wanted a name which was sort of vague. I think it has a sense of humor to it, to talking. Tuesday. You said somebody.